All right, I just want to go over real quick a little bit about warming up. So um, when athletes come in our gym, we do a pretty good job of warming them up and preparing them to do what we're going to do that day. Um, but they miss the boat a lot of times. I think we get a lot of injuries and we have a lot of issues when they go to do their sports um, warming up. So if it's an individual sport, you have total control over how you warm up and how you prepare to compete. If it's a team sport, you don't have total control over it, but you could actually do some things to um, individually to prepare yourself for competition. Um, a lot of times the sport coaches don't really know physiology, they don't really know how the body works, so the warm-ups are lacking, um, and that's a problem. So, let me start with the gym. So when people come in the gym, we usually do a general warm-up. Warm-ups should go from general to specific. Um, so, in other words, when they come in the gym, we're gonna, the first thing we're going to do is try to raise body temperature. When you raise body temperature, everything else works a little bit better. The muscles become a little more pliable, they actually contract stronger, um, and you're going to perform better with a warmer muscle temperature. So, the first thing we do is going to be three, four hundred jump ropes. If you don't jump rope, we jog, or we do, um, but most people jump rope, or we do, uh, we go on the bike. But jump roping is going to improve our, um, raise our body temperature, but it's going to also in the long term, over the course of months and years, it's going to improve coordination, um, and that's important for athletes. Then we go into what's called, a, we call the mobility portion. Some people might call it stretching, mobility. Mobility just means we're working on the range of a joint instead of the length of a tissue. Okay, so hip mobility versus hamstring flexibility, right? Hamstring flexibility would be how uh, long you can make your hamstring, hip mobility would be how much range of motion you can take your hip joint through. So we go through mobility or stretching and then we go into our prep phase. So we do basically three things to prepare ourselves to train that day. We do general with jump rope, we do mobility, um, and that has short term and long term. We're trying to become more mobile for that session but we also are trying to improve mobility over a period of time, over months and years. Um, you know, it might, you might, be, you, your mobility may not improve in one session, but over, if you put that together for a few months, it definitely is going to get better. Then we go into our prep phase. Now, our prep is just some general training stuff that's going, that they're going to do before they actually start lifting uh, heavier loads. Um, and our untrained athletes, we do, um, we do basically just core stuff and then we go into the workout. With our trained athletes, our guys who have been training longer, are lifting heavier weights, we're going to do prep, which means we're going to spend 10, 12 minutes of dragging. So for a lower body um, workout, we might drag sleds. We might do some type of squat variation with a kettlebell. We might do some type of lunge variation. We do ab work, hip work. Um, we do all that type of stuff, basically preparing the body to start to lift some weights. Now, um, even when we get into our lifting, we're going to work up. So we always, we don't just, if someone could lift, 405, we don't just put 405 in the bar and do it. We start at 135, we do 135, 225, 275, 315, 365, 385, 405. Right, so we're, we're still, we're becoming um, more specific as we get closer to our most important task. So we start very general and become more specific. Now this next thing would be intensity level, right? So as we get closer to doing a 405 pound deadlift, we become more intense. We go from jumping rope to stretching to uh, dragging sleds and doing abs and then into deadlifting, but we start light and we work to really heavy. This same thing should apply to, to sports or comp competitive warm ups, right? So if we're gonna be doing, if we're gonna be wrestling, you probably want to do some type of general warm up to raise your body temperature. You want to do a little bit of mobility to uh, work your joints out so that you aren't stiff, right? So you have better range of motion at the joints. Then you want to go into something that's gonna be a little bit more specific. So it might be, maybe we do some a uh, little bit of plyo work to get our heart rate up, and then we go into the actual wrestling itself, and you wrestle somebody. What I suggest in, in sports where, where, you, where athletes have to get their, where heart rate goes way up, like wrestling, uh, like um, maybe football, like track and field sprinting, for those types of sports, we need to get your heart rate up, elevate it almost like you almost compete it, come down, relax, um, and then go into competition, right? So we don't want to go into competition not yet having, bro not yet having had your heart rate way up. 
Now, some people say you just got to break a sweat. Yes, you have to. We want you to break a sweat to raise body temperature of the muscles, but we also want your heart rate to go up near, like at the same rate as it would in competition. So, if you're wrestling and you're going to be have a heart rate of ninety uh, percent of your max heart rate or even higher, you need to touch that a little bit. You don't need to wear yourself out. Um, in your warm up where you can't function, but like you need to touch that really high heart rate, get yourself really out of breath, almost get into that lactate uh, zone, or you know, br brush up on lactate capacity, and then come down, relax, chill out, maybe just stay warm, stay sweating, and then go out and compete. Same thing would be for like if you were a sprinter, if you're if you're warming up for a combine, you have to run the 40 yard dash. Now your heart rate doesn't go up that high, but it's very neural driven. So you should be running a 30, maybe two 30s, maybe a 40, depending on how good a shape you're in, before you actually get timed in a 40 yard dash. Um, and that that leads me to the last thing: the more in shape you are, the more of a, a high intensity warm you can tolerate. If you're not in that great of shape, if you're younger, if you're weaker, if you're not in great of shape, you can't tolerate that big of warm Think about the gym. We're not going to give someone who's really weak, we're not going to, if someone could squat 35 pound kettlebell, we're not going to do a 35 pound kettlebell squat for warm up. No, we're going to do maybe some planks, maybe a little warm up, and we're going to just go right into the kettlebell squat. So the more in shape you are, the more intense your event, the more you need of a warm up. Okay, now if you're, um, if you're really in shape, then you need to get a little bit better of a warm up. That's all. I mean, you could tolerate more. If you're not that great a shape, you're. If you do an intense warm up, it's going to wear you out, and your performance will suffer from it. And that's it. Just wanted to touch on warm ups a little bit. If you have any questions, let me know.